but has been tested and ready-made to be adapted in other regions of our of our extraordinary planet for the benefit of, of rural communities. All the project phases have been funded by ICEL Innovations Fund to SECO. And well, I probably should start. What is what is Blueprint all around? What is it all about? It's uh, <clears throat> it has three main features, three really main features, and we'll get into more detail. It's first of all participatory, as at its maximum expression, I would say. It is it is also pretty low cost, and it is made to evaluate small territories village level, community level, maximum municipality size, nothing of province or department that's that's too broad. We are really interested in the in the local stakeholders and their benefit in the rural, rural commun communities. It's multi-level and that multi five level system accurately reflects the environmental and socioeconomic reality. I say accurately because this has been testified by the local stakeholders and institutions, right? Because it's high precision, it ref in, and it has a lot of dialogue focus groups with um, embedded within. And so, with all these features, it is a good basis, uh, a very good basis for to to construct a common territorial agenda, uh, uh, an action plan for for the small territory. So at Sand, to start with, uh, for us, the landscape is uh, is is dominated by agricultural or ag industry or forestry land use um, land use uh, systems, with different local actors that that act, of course, differently. It's a very dynamic unit, as we know, with with these people around, and is characterized characterized by all the interactions between ecosystems and rural communities and and the product, uh, the agriculture production. It could be small watersheds or any administrative areas, but as I said, small villages, maximum municipality size. What is a sustainable landscape for us? It needs to provide a decent livelihoods and income to cover the basic needs of the people. Productive activities should not degrade the natural resources and ecosystems. There should be an overall balance between the socioeconomic development and, and environmental conservation. And the processes within the sustainable landscape should be participatory, right? In a democratic way, uh, with the local actors uh, as protagonists. So the six year process started in 2018 with the concepts that were San presented at the Mesoamerican Landscape Dialogue at Cartier Turialba. With good feedback by then, as you saw, as you can see, the people were on top for us, were the priority already for us with this concept, high precision uh, satellite images, farm visits, that was the basic concept. Then with Fundación Natura in Colombia for three years, in Zona Bananera at the Caribbean coast as a testing case, we, we built, we, we developed the tool uh, in its first version and summarized it and it's still available uh, on, on a dashboard with, with the results and all the features and interactive map, etc. Most importantly, during the last year, sorry, <clears throat> with Fundación Natura and Swiss Contact, we further optimized the tool and made it ready. Swiss Contact as an external organization <clears throat> was trained uh, to, to implement it uh, for the good of their um, sustain uh, Coco, what's it, what's the name, Sarah? Programa sustainable sustainable landscapes pro uh, project in Antioquia. Yes, sorry, I, I always mess up the the name. Good. So here we are. It's a five level system. It starts with the high resolution satellite image analysis, uh, secondary information as available available from official data. Mostly these data, at least in Colombia, are available at municipality level. Of course, they, they don't go at the village level, but they provide some good additional feedback on socioeconomic data. Uh, at the center of the tool are really the focus groups, the interaction with the local stakeholders, a positive approach that builds on the assets at first uh, of, of the communities. We also uh, formalized uh, what we call landscape immersion walk, where we work with community or producer association leaders and confirm 
what we have seen on the satellite image and, and discuss what's going on, uh, the courses, etc. And adoption observations agro, um, uh, towards agronomic um, uh, practices, sustainable practices, resilient practices. Um, well, this is this is one of our masterpieces, really. Um, a very precise um, land, land use analysis. We have come up with a balance of a scale of one ten thousand, not too fine because uh, the the more detail, the more time it would add to, and the more cost it would add to the tool the, to the toolkit. It's still a, a good link between farm and landscape. As you can see, the turquoise spots are, are really cocoa small holders. So it goes into that level and it has also a value in terms of proving uh, that a small holder has not been involved um, in deforestation activities. The red pink spots are natural areas that, that have been transformed to um, to productive uh, activities in the last four years. This is a comparison, a, a two-time window, multi-temporal analysis, 2019 and 2000, uh, 2023. And the green areas are around, uh, the other way around, abandoned land and nature uh, takes it back through natural succession. Um, it is visual interpretation. It doesn't lie. Uh, doesn't rely on uh, unprecise automated algorithms, computer algorithms that oftentimes confuse uh, tree crops with forest. We had the case in Zona Bananera, where, for example, Global Forest Watch uh, estimated a forty percent of tree cover, which was false. The, the true tree cover was 5%. Everything else was banana and palm. Um, all right. Good. Julian, over to you, please. All right. The second level of uh, the blueprint is the summary analysis of official secondary data. The secondary data complements the GIS component and give us a complete view of the socioeconomic and environmental dynamics of the uh, study areas. As you see, uh, as, as Oliver mentioned previously, we go to the municipality level, that be like the uh, second administrative level in Colombia. It's not too small, but it's not too large. Uh, and with this, we, the, the, the secondary data give us like, uh, this other data that is important because the sustainability of a land of a landscape is not just the trees in a landscape or a, a specific stuffs. It's all this all the social and, and economic uh, components interconnected, and these secondary data give us that context. Next slide, Oliver. The uh, tier level uh, in the center of the blueprint methodology is the focus groups, is the participatory methodologies. And here we using two, that be the appreciative inquiry and the seven community capital framework. This give us, this give the community the ability to talk and analyze his strengths and his weakness and see the entire territory as a as a interconnected stuff. Um, why we use that? Uh, because the community capital and you can go to the next slide, Oliver, please. Uh, give us the ability to see seven different um, like teams or or components. Uh, all the things that happen in the landscape. We have the natural capital, the cultural capital, the human capital, the social capital, political, financial, and built capital. And we use the capital flowers that be in the left to put together with the community what is their strengths in each individual capital and the needs. And with that needs, we're using the, um, the spiral through uh, social resilience that being the, in the right part 
to uh, put an order to see which of those needs is the most important to improve fears and what is the next and next and next. And with that, we put this together uh, and, and score that. We have two scores, the community score and the framework score. The framework score give us uh, which of those actions that the community put in the capital flower uh, has the most impact because it's the one that having more impact through the different capitals. And the community capital is which of those are very important to the community. And with those put these two scores together, give us uh, the order or uh, the community, the, the order that we, uh, and we can see which of those needs or activities uh, that the community think is important to them to go through the resilience of the landscape, uh, we need to go first. Uh, then we go to the next slide, Oliver, please, is uh, the immersive landscape walk. This is important because we saw many things in the maps. We see changes in coverage, we see uh, forest that go into agricultural land, agricultural land that go to forest. We read uh, stuff in the secondary data, but the, this walk through the territory give us the sense that uh, this information is right, because in some cases, this information is too broad and don't have the level of detail that maybe you need to understand what's happening in the territory. And walking through walking through a territory gives you that sense. What's happened? What's happened in the in a cocoa area? Why this change from one side to another? In the in the focus groups, the people tell you some stuff like in in this case, uh, some of those areas was uh, without any human activity given the conflict in the area. But then when the, the peace agreement comes, the people come back to the farms and uh, working on the farms. And, they, and this is why you see a change between, um, between forest or secondary forest to agricultural land. And, Walking through gives you that sense that the information is right. The information that the community gives you go to the same direction. And then uh, we have the last step. Uh, please go to the next slide. That be the adoption observations. The adoption observations is a methodology developed by Mars uh, and give us a uh, very simple framework with 21 questions that enable us to observe the state of the farm in a specific practices. Uh, and this, in, in the wall, if you see the wall, we go to, the, to a larger scale with the GIS analysis to a small one and more granular to the farms. We choose a number of farms in the main uh, value chain or the main crop in the area. We choose a sample of, of number of farmers and farms we want to see, and then we do the option observations in those farms, and then they give us like some clues what's happened with uh, agricultural practices attached to conservation or uh, is, is good or is not good and how we can improve that. All right, Sara, go ahead. This is yours, Willy. Oh, yeah, right. The The last part is uh, it, it, uh, for the common territorial agenda is having like a, a multi-stakeholder forum. Here in the multi-stakeholder forum, we put all the actors in the community together, farmers, uh, community action boards, uh, companies, enterprises, the local government, uh, other NGOs in the area, 
And we put together all this data and share this data. And with that, and the uh, uh, with the inputs that coming from the uh, capital framework, we put this together and then the community and, and these other actors was agreed in which of those activities coming uh, in an agenda that they can work in uh, to implement, uh, to make the landscape more sustainable. Sustainable in different ways, right? Uh, yeah, this is, the, this is the exercise and in the photo, uh, you can see like the last activity uh, that we do with Switch Contact in Apartado. Uh, and here we have the Chamber of Commerce, we have the major uh, agricultural officer, we have uh, representatives or the two villages we work in in the project. And here, uh, with the inputs that coming from the from the focus groups and the visits and the walkthroughs and the secondary data, so it's contact prepare a plan uh, with three main um, like focus to be sure they can include the things that the community uh, require uh, to be sure the landscape uh, was sustainable. All right. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm the coordinator of the Sustainable Landscapes Project in Antioquia. So everything you have seen so far was implemented in Apartado, but we wanted to bring it to our another region, uh, which is called Magdalena Medio, also located in the Antioquia Department of Colombia. So to do this, uh, I just want to highlight the incredible work that San did in putting a beautiful guide together for the replication of the methodology. Um, and the way we decided to replicate it was um, with a Swiss consultant and expert. So first we gave them all of the tools and the guide for him to replicate the methodology, but also Juli and Oliver, uh, they had a couple of sessions with them where they went further in the steps that he needed to uh, take into account to apply this methodology in the Magdalena Media region. Um, but these were the principal steps that we take into account. So first one was collaboration and knowledge transfer, transfer, where we basically conducted some workshops along with the community. And these sessions were essential for engaging local stakeholders and in incorporating their valuable insights into our methodology. And also, it ensure that the, lo the local context was deeply understood and integrated into the planning of our project, the Sustainable Landscapes Project. Then we did a methodology integration because this Swiss contact consultant, um, he had a very advanced technique also from Swiss universities. So this enhanced the accuracy and relevance of our assessments in the Magdalena Media region. And by combining these methodologies, we could tailor our approach to better suit the specifics of the context and of the communities. We did also a regional diagnosis um, involving a variety of tools and techniques, collecting secondary information. And we also conducted focus groups with the community. As you can see in the picture, this happened, I think, uh, in March. So it wasn't a long enough, a long ago, I'm sorry. And this provided a detailed understanding of the region's challenges and opportunities we had to tackle. Then we mapped the needs using the community capitals framework that Julio already explained very well. And the final step was, of course, translating these identified needs into actionable projects with precise impacts that I'm going to be speaking uh, forward. So Oliver, if you can help me with the next slide, please. And something I really wanna highlight from our project and from this alliance with uh, San and Fundación Natura with the development of this methodology is the power that collaboration has in um, making these tailor-made solutions for sustainable landscapes. Uh, of course, you, you saw Juli that was talking about community feedback sessions and stakeholder meetings. These two tools are 
completely necessary to ensure that the community's needs and concerns are being addressed into a sustainable development plan and that you are adjusting your project plans based on their input and this engagement process also ensures that the projects are truly reflective of the community's point of view and you are going to be gaining more trust in the long term if you involve the communities from from scratch and not at the end. And of course, the stakeholder meetings are super, super important um, from all of the sectors. So here we involved private sector, public sector and civil society um, to gather additional insights because they have been working in the territory for a long time. And it's very important to work in whatever has been built already and not start from scratch and also to start building a broad base of support and ensure that the projects are going to be aligned with regional priorities. So I really want to highlight that. And I think that translates in a positive impact of constructive collaboration. And in, 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 in the long term, that translates into tackling regional challenges effectively, into building tailor made to the specific needs of the region, engaging local communities, uh, also building on existing efforts and knowledge, enhancing efficiency, uh, leveraging collective expertise, etc. And as I said before, strengthening the trust and cooperation among different stakeholders to ensure that your project, your project is going to be in the long term viable and resilient. And the last slide I wanted to talk into, okay, what what this translates into. So. We mapped all of the needs. What are we going to do? So from the project, from the Sustainable Landscapes project, we, uh, our work together with SAN has resulted in tailor-made solutions to address these identified needs. And it has led to the development of seven specific projects. So now you are seeing our project portfolio right now that has been, of course, socialized that with, as we have said before, and as Juli said before, with different stakeholders in the communities. And we are hoping that these projects are going to be resolving and um, giving a very sustainable solution to the needs. We have, for example, sustainable school gardens um, in one of the projects. We also have another project about associative strengthening. We have a carbon credits project with a regional focus. We have agroforestry systems promotion and commercial viability for those agroforestry systems. We are going to be promoting regenerative agriculture because it's going to be one of our pillars. We're going to be scaling that regenerative agriculture with a specific methodology from a Swiss university. And we are already implementing a tourist, tourism um, competitive and sustainable destinations initiative in both regions. So we are very proud. And I think this all translates into a common vision for sustainable landscapes. And it exemplifies um, what our vision of development is and what the vision of development of the region is. So we are hoping to address uh, improved soil and water quality with these projects, enhance biodiversity, strengthen community cohesion, ensure economic stability, and of course, diversification of the economy of the communities and secure long-term viability. And this was our experience uh, at at, at Swiss contact levels and at the project level. So I'm gonna give the word to Lorena. Lorena, you're, you're in mute. Oh my gosh. Okay, now we can hear you. <laughs> Okay, now you can hear me? Yes, perfectly. Yes, uh, good morning again. It's a pleasure to be here uh, sharing our experience working with SAN since 2009 in this uh, Blueprint Adventure or initiative. Just to remind who we are, Fundación Natura is a Colombian NGO with the mission for the conservation and restoration of biodiversity and its benefits for society in natural and transformed landscapes to promote resilient social ecological systems through nature-based solution. Only, yes, please uh, stay in the first slide for a minute. 
I mentioned our mission here linked to the Blueprint Initiative because it give, gives us the opportunity to transform society's relationship with nature in rural areas that are vulnerable to climate change and other drivers of degradation considering people's voice and needs, just as Sarah mentioned. This is the footprint of Fundación Natura in the regions where we work. This next, next slide, yes. In Colombia, the blueprint tool was applied in three of the 170 municipalities prioritized by the government for the peace process implementation since 2017. The English name for this territorially for this territorial planning unit will be the Territorially Focused Development Program, PEDET. This is the, the acronym, as we know, these uh, units here in Colombia, and its um, objectives are to, um, uh, to empower and transform communities, revitalize the economy and strengthen food security, contribute to reducing rural poverty, promote uh, departmental and municipal development plans. In this map, I show the PEDET municipalities almost spread throughout the country with an important concentration in the Amazon, Amazonian region, the Caribbean and the Pacific region and in some regions of the Andes. Uh, Oliver, can you show the, oh, okay, the Pacific, the and Andes and the uh, Amazonian and Caribbean regions, because this is important for them to know. The debt are management and planning instruments of the Colombian government whose objectives are empower and transform communities, revitalize economies and strengthen food security, contribute to the reduction of rural poverty and promote development plans. I mentioned this because it's just what we are looking for with the blueprint to regenerate territories and landscape, landscapes impacted by drivers of degradation, such as climate change, army, army conflict, and land misuse. One of the main criticisms to the PEDET process coming from social and community organizations is the lack of sufficient participation and recognition of what, of what people really need and want to transform their, rea uh, their social reality living in conflict zones. And working on that is exactly the added value of the blueprint in the places where we are working with the tool in Colombia. When we started the pilot exercise and later in the second project, the emphasis was on the participation of the relevant stakeholders to design the tool with them, making sure to gather their needs and to concretize in the blueprint, blueprint tool what should be included in an approach to sustainability that encompasses social, economic, and environmental dimensions. From the beginning of the pilot exercise, we, we conceived the blueprint as a social tool to empower society in conflict zones. This is in line with point one of the peace agreements, which is specifically dedicated to rural systems and their communities. The three municipalities where we work with the blueprint are uh, Zona Bananera. Can you show them, please? Oliver, yes. Zona Bananera in the Caribbean region and an area mainly dedicated to banana production for export. Here, the blueprint began to design to be designed with the result of the first set of variables and dimensions of social, economic, and biophysical sustainability. Later, in the Gaitania uh, region, um, not municipalities, smaller than uh, municipality unit, but is within a municipality unit, unit called Tanadas. In the Andean region, we worked with coffee growers to adjust the tool and to formulate the common participatory agenda. The third site is Apartado. Yes, Apartado, 
with cocoa producers in the Caribbean region and is the experience that uh, Sarah already mentioned. Next slide, please. Uh -huh. Some of the lessons learned from the initiative in both agricultural zones, in uh, Zona Bananera and Planadas, as well as Apartado with Cocoa, could be summarized as follows. Understanding the community's relationship to the landscape is an ongoing process, an ongoing task that requires a working knowledge about the territory's history, its composition, the dynamics that occur within, and the process that have shaped it. Also recognizing the diversity of people that make up the landscape and their local knowledge are critical for the success of actionable strategies. Initiatives, training, and technical assistance are critical to promote restoration and conservation practices involving local producers. You ca we cannot go there and just ask them this come to, uh, to say something about or to participate in, in workshops and in the project. We need to, to give them incentives and the training and the, uh, really the capacity to do so. Next slide, slide please. Uh, other uh, lessons uh, could be solutions and action actionable strategies must speak to the territory reality and environmental approaches cannot be separated from financial and social and cultural conditions. Incentives, training and technical assistance are critical to promote restoration and conservation practices involving local producers. And local organizations and their leader are trusted governance bodies and key to working with the community. This is really important. We worked with the Junta de Acción Comunal. I don't know the English name for that, but it's a kind of association coming from the very root organization, from the root organization of working with, with them is really amazing and really important for any initiative. And this is it, a summary of our experience so far with the blueprint in which the we emphasize the need to include at each stage, be it the design, adaptation, or implementation phase, a real participatory process, which is fundamental for the sustainability of the actions. Thank you.